Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our Facebook Live sessions. This is our third and final one of the day. Um, so right now we're going to be talking about an overview of the MD PhD program. Um, so in this Facebook Live session, we'll be going through a program overview. Um, we'll be giving you some reference letter tips because MD PhD students do need to, or applicants do need to submit additional letters of reference. And then we'll be, I'll be asking Kendra some frequently asked questions that we get surrounding the MD PhD program. Thanks, Hannah. No problem. Uh, so in case you haven't watched any prior Facebook right. Lives, <laughs> I'm shaking the camera again. I'm Kendra Hawk. I am the Associate Registrar of Enrollment Management um, with Enrollment Services and Undergraduate Medical Education. My name is Hannah Stevenson. I work here in the Undergraduate Medical Education and Enrollment Services Office as a Student Enrollment Services Assistant. So the MD-PhD program is um, a parallel application stream to the MD program. And it's for a program that is sometimes misunderstood. It's a program that is training students to become clinician scientists or physician scientists. They're called two different things. Um, a clinician scientist is someone who is a trained doctor, but also does research. And it's not just a little research. It typically needs to be 50% of your week or more. So, um, you know, a clinician scientist their week might look like they have clinic, uh, maybe they are a pediatrician, they have clinic on Mondays for half days, and then the remaining week, the remainder of their week, they have a lab, they're probably a faculty member at a university, and they perform research that is related to their practice. So some you know, terrible, or uh, what do they call them, wicked problem that they're trying to crack in their practice is something they might focus on every week in their research. And it's a, really phenomenal way to kind of bridge the gap between research and clinical practice. These, they are um, doing that every single week. Um, so if that's something that interests you, then the MD-PhD program is one route to become a clinician scientist. There are other routes. Um, you can do the MD program and go into residence, and when you're in residence, you can pursue a PhD or a master's at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, the MD PhD program is sometimes referred to as a fast track because you are completing your MD and your PhD kind of simultaneously, so that once you get into residence, you can focus on your residency training and maybe do a postdoc at that point. Um, the program is long. It's a long stream of education. It takes a lot of commitment. It starts with your first year of medicine. And then in your second year, typically, you enter your PhD. You are absent from medicine for the four years, roughly, that you do your PhD, four to five. It can take longer, though. Um, then you return to medical school for your final three years of medical school and then carry on into residency. So it is a very long training path. Um, part of what we do to mitigate the cost of a training path like that is provide uh, a stipend for all students in the MD-PhD program, which uh, people don't realize. Um, the stipend is tuition. Right now, it's tuition plus incidentals plus $18,000 a year. Uh, the tuition for MD-PhD students is different from regular MD students. And that's something you can look up on the website. Um, so when you graduate, you would graduate with an MD degree, so your undergraduate medical degree, as well as a PhD. That's what the combined program it is. You don't end up with an MD-PhD degree, per se. Um, so if you're interested, if you're really excited, because you have to be very excited by this career path in order to pursue it, uh, you need to just check off a little box when you um, submit your MD application on OMSAS to show that you're interested, that you will be applying for the MD PhD program. And that will trigger your ability to um, submit the other additional information, uh, application materials that you need to submit. That includes three reference letters specifically for the MD PhD program. So that's an, in addition to the MD program reference letters and a personal essay, as well as your academic CV. And every applicant to the MD-PhD must submit an academic CV. Even if you are an undergrad, uh, you have to submit that academic CV to be considered for the program. And I'm emphasizing this because unfortunately in the past few years, we've seen some great candidates coming from an undergraduate program who misread 
the instructions and felt they didn't need to submit that academic CV because typically an undergrad does not submit it, but you need to submit it <laughs> as an MD PhD applicant. Um, I also wanted to make clear that the admissions committee in the MD PhD program runs parallel to the MD program. So it has a separate interview day than the MD program. And also the MD PhD admissions committee does not review any materials that you have submitted as part of your MD package. So your three letters are completely separate from your MD reference letters. If you are a grad applicant, and so the MD program has asked for three letters plus a letter from your supervisor for the grad review. Um, what is the official name of that letter? It's escaping me right now. The graduate supervisor's letter. Exactly. Yeah. That is not part of the MD PhD package. It is not seen by the committee. So um, make sure that information is repeated in, in the MD PhD letter uh, that you want the committee to know about. Have I forgotten anything about the program? I think you gave a perfect overview, <laughs> yeah. Um, I do have some follow-up questions okay. for you, though. Mm -hmm. um, so do you have any tips for selecting referees? Because certainly MD-PhD students or applicants um, need to submit a lot of yes. references. Yeah, and the references that the MD-PhD committee are looking for are very different from the MD reference mm -hmm. letters. Um, they It's more of a free-form letter. If you look on the website, the topics that uh, the committee would like to know about you are, are mentioned. And so it's important that you would submit and direct your referees to that list so they know what to speak to. Um, the letter, uh, the, the letter, you must include a letter from your supervisor. Um, if you don't, that is like any sort of research, especially if you're a graduate uh, applicant, you really should have a letter from your supervisor. And if you don't, I think it would be important to explain why somehow um, by contacting the admissions uh, committee or, or our team. Um, so when you select your referees, you should select your supervisor. You want to select other people who can speak to your research capacity. So I think a common mistake that I've seen, or it's not a mistake because it is three letters, so usually people's um, capacity for research is covered in at least two of them. But we're not, the, the committee is not that interested in learning about how you got 100% in a certain course, for instance. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't reflect on, on your future productivity as a researcher. That is amazing, but it's not really relevant to what the committee is looking for. I would say that um, it's best to have the letters written by faculty members or, you know, if you're a professional and you're working in a professional research environment, then that would also be um, an appropriate reference, but uh, make sure that they're speaking to your research productivity. Um, I think uh, those are the major tips about selecting the referee. Perfect. Um, so for applicants who apply to the MD PhD program, do they get ex they, do they get considered for the MD program? Like are they separate? How does that work? So like I mentioned before, it's a parallel application process mm -hmm. and they are simultaneously considered and reviewed for the MD program. So um, it very well may be that you're not selected for an interview for the MD PhD program, but you are for the MD program. Or if you get selected for an MD PhD interview, um, you will also interview for the MD program and you'll be considered for both separately. If you aren't provided with an offer to the MD PhD program, you continue to be in the pool for the MD program. So there's no disadvantage to applying to this stream whatsoever. Perfect. Um, so for graduate applicants, so based on what you said about references earlier, so mm -hmm. graduate applicants, if they have their graduate supervisor write the letter of reference, they may need three letters. So the graduate supervisor's letter of reference for the grad review, the MD PhD letter of reference, and then the general MD letter. Yes. Do they really need to submit three letters of reference? Yes, and I had a call about this just today. <laughs> um, it may seem like a lot to ask of your supervisor to write three letters, but like I said, the MD PhD letter, the, the committee isn't reviewing the other two letters, so material can be repeated. Um, and if you have the kind of supervisor that you maybe don't, I, I'm trying to think of a nice way to put this, but trust with putting a lot of time into writing these letters for you, I think it's absolutely acceptable to sort of sit down with them, talk about your career objectives, 
and provide them with sort of a, an overview of the things that need to be in each letter, break it down for them, because it is confusing. Um, and it is really important that they do all three letters for you in order to have you know, a full picture of you for all of the admissions uh, streams that you're applying to, both of them, I should say. Um, so that's what I, how I would approach it with, uh, with your supervisor. Um, another nice thing about doing it that way is uh, on your CV, you might have listed some publications that are in review or um, have been submitted or maybe haven't been published yet but have been accepted. Mm -hmm. So the letter is a great place for your supervisor to confirm that information. So if you, you know, provide to your supervisor that you have uh, indicated that these publications are in review or whatever state they're in, then they can reconfirm it on the letter, which is helpful for us. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, so if someone's offered a spot in the MD-PhD program, do they still receive an MD offer if they're considered for that program? Uh, no, that's another common question. So once you accept or once you're offered a spot to the MD-PhD program, um, our, the MD-PhD admissions runs a little bit earlier than the MD admissions. So students will find out typically by March 15th whether they received an offer to the MD-PhD program. Mm -hmm. um, there are you know, multiple rounds, so it might, you might find out after that point, but we, we aim to have the offers out by then. Um, so if you were to decline the offer to the University of Toronto MD-PhD program, you would return to the MD pool, but there's no guarantee that you would also receive an MD offer at that point. Perfect. Um, so I think that's all the questions yeah. I have for you. Great. Yeah. So if you have any more questions about the MD-PhD program, we do have, uh, we're, we're happy to answer them through our office. And there is a coordinator of the MD-PhD program that we can direct you to as well, as well as a bunch of amazing MD-PhD students who are happy to speak to you about the program. So feel free to get in touch to ask for any of those things. Perfect. Thanks so much, Kendra. Okay. Um, hope you have a good day, everyone. Take care.